Hey, I love combining old technology with new technology. Use an iPad for reference and use a 150 year old slate chalkboard as a drawing tool. Anyway, I want to talk about something that, uh, as far as if you want to understand uh, how your digital camera works, a lot of people don't care. You know, ultimately they want to know how many megapixels their camera has and what the output is on the card and how um, great the dynamic range is. Like the D750 is really awesome um, for bringing out uh, low light detail. Now a lot of people think that is related to the sensor and it absolutely is not. It's part of the AD converters and is part of the SNR compressional algorithms. There's something called adaptive temporal noise reduction algorithms and uh, there's something else called uh, temporal noise reduction and there's also something that is spatial noise reduction. There's a set of uh, spatial, temporal, and adaptive algorithms that process the signal as uh, so far as its gain versus its noise. Like if you have a really high SO when you're shooting a concert or as I showed you in a prior video how the D750 trounces everything else out there as so far as uh, really high ISO like 12,800 and uh, shooting at, uh, I don't know, what what was it, one thirtieth of a second, how it went in really deep shadows, something I couldn't even see at all would actually bring out the detail. Now people think that is uh, on the side of the sensor, but it's not. It's actually uh, firmware. This is stuff that Nikon and Canon don't want you to know about. What it is is basically software used to bring out the image that isn't actually there. It's actually filling in the missing noise and uh, it's also compressing out. That isn't necessarily the totality of the case. It's actually doing spatial and temporal compression and there are advanced algorithms involved. But now the truth of the matter is, is that you're getting the picture and it is accurate but also it is the case that the camera is producing something that it is not actually gathering, okay, it's an important point, the picture that is put on your card, a part of that image, depending on the light, the ISO, uh, it, part of that image was not actually captured by the sensor. Please listen to that. Part of what is on your card, especially in high ISO, you know, dark shots, what is captured on your card was not captured by the sensor. It's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. You mean my camera is filling in information that it never gathered to begin with? Yes. Um, however, is it accurate? The, the answer is yes and no. So let's do a really crude look at what this is because most people don't want to go into depth on this. Ultimately, they want to know how great the picture is on the card. I mean, they don't give a damn. You know, they're worried enough about taking a great shot and pro processing it in post, so they don't care, give a poop about this. I'm going to give you five or six links below that will be great informational reading for you, really, really good. Let's go over some uh, really uh, simple stuff. Um, like for example, white noise has a few different properties. Uh, one of the points is that the value of the neighboring pixels are uncorrelated and independent of one another and uh, the spectrum is flat. Now the white noise spectrum itself has a variational peak at like 0.25 cycles. Depends on whether it's red, green, or blue, but these algorithms are actually known on uh, the photo sites as far as how the signal is processed. Now here we would have like an ISO 200 uh, signal at a photo site that is produced. It has a certain SNR my handwriting sucks, right? Signal to noise ratio, which is awesome. Okay, great rendition. So, um, a bunch of uh, spatial temporal compressional algorithms are not used for that because they don't have to be introduced because you have a strong signal gain. Whether it's an FX sensor, DX sensor, doesn't matter. Let's say you're shooting like the, a concert late at night and you got, you know, everything is just dark as a well digger's fanny. <laughs> And you have this signal below, let's just say it's the exact same light, exact same frequency. Here we have noise and the SNR firmware compressional algorithms which exist in your camera, not on, the, not on the sensor, but before it's put on the buffer, but after the sensor, these are recognized as noise. Okay, so what the camera does in the firmware is it goes, well we know that comparative to the, the adjacent photo sites, and by applying an algorithm, we can remove that and we can draw in, draw in, I'm using the words in quote, we can draw in what... This is the same technology that's used in hard drives. It's called uh, 
uh, maximum uh, likelihood prediction because the hard drive data compression is so uh, read write is so so small uh, that the ones and the zeros can easily overlap uh, overlap from being read. It's called maximum response uh, maximum response uh, maximum uh, maximum response highest likelihood. Ma I think it's M R L. LR, maximum response highest likelihood, which basically means that there's empty spots that the camera knows to look for as noise, noise spikes, and it eliminates those and it draws in what the signal should be. So this has gone from a noisy high ISO signal versus like a, you know, a bright outdoor landscape. This is like a dark concert for example and the camera has used the firmware algorithms to extract this by eliminating out known cycles of noise now these cycles of noise can be both spatial and temporal let's take a look over here here we have temporal noise um, now I'm a ham radio operator and you know I grew up you know studying uh, SNR antenna gain certain antenna geometries have certain spatial gain and they also have certain temporal gain and depending on signal strength received and the same thing applies in the radio astronomy as applies to ham radio that applies to digital sensors okay electromagnetism is electromagnetism is electromagnetism here's an example of temporal noise like you get a really weak signal you're probably not old enough to remember staticky signals from your antenna you know where the uh, picture would come in and <laughs> so you'd have fifty percent noise and fifty percent signal the algorithms are present to eliminate these temporal losses. These are gaps in time. This is used in radio astronomy and interferometry. And what it does is it eliminates out the time. It eliminates the time variable. So here we have the signal, but it's broken. But the algorithm so it says, well, okay, here's what we got. All we have to do is just follow the breadcrumbs, the breadcrumbs of the signal. Ta-da! It's really just pretty much this. It's obviously infinitely more complex than that. Now, that's a temporal algorithm. There's a spatial algorithm present uh, after your... None of this is on the sensor, okay? This is after the sensor, baby. Here we have a spatial. Imagine these are photosites, okay? Here we have a normal signal. Here we have a noise spot. So you'll have a picture here, for example, where you've got whatever, somebody standing there, and obviously there's noise all over the place because they're shooting in dark, whatever. These are all noise spots. Now this photosite would be a noise photosite. So you've got enough light here to be registered depending on how sensitive the sensor is. Now ISO obviously increases, uh, it uh, boosts and uh, amplifies uh, the noise but is able to eliminate that out by the spatial temporal algorithms that are present. This is why all current sensor technology is going. The next generation of all digital sensor, uh, digital cameras, okay, are going to be full frame sensors with DX pixel densities. Um, it used to be, well, full frame sensors, the cat's ass, and DX sensors were small and they had noise issues because they had false small photo sites and it wasn't a larger. Most of that has been eliminated now. Okay? All these camera manufacturers have known that for years. This firmware technology, which comes from radio astronomy, ta da! Yep, that's right, radio astronomy. Um, is introduced into the same electromagnetic signal processing that's used in digital sensors. This is crap that Nikon or Canon want you to know about and they ain't talking about it. Not because it's some huge secret, but there's literally a small room of geeks, super geeks at Nikon and Canon that deal with this stuff and write the algorithms to get the maximum potential, the maximum orange juice out of the orange of the sensor, shall we say, out of your digital sensor. So this would be a spatial, these are photosites. So this is a photosite has got a signal, this one's noise, this one's got a signal. So these are all adjacent. So this is spatial algorithm. So here we have six photosites, okay? This one's noise, this one's got sufficient signal, this one is noise also. So what it does is it blends all of these together to say, well, the adjacent one is this and this and this. So it's able to eliminate over here. It's able to eliminate a great deal of this noise. Now, talk about really, really, really bad low light up the, up at ISO 12,800, and you know you're shooting in a really dark ass place. There's only so much these algorithms can do, but they can do a lot. I mean, a lot. I'm going to give you an example on links below to videos about how good these algorithms are. I'm going to show you a really quick photographic example of these applied 
and unapplied, okay? This is what the sensor is gathering. Let's say this is your sensor at 12,800 ISO and it's shooting at 2 o'clock in the morning and there basically is nothing but weak moonlight. Analogously, this is what your sensor is gathering. You're thinking, but this is what is actually input, actually output to your card. So you're thinking, oh my god, this new D750 is just so awesome because, you know, my old uh, D600 would look like this and my D750 uh, looks like this and ultra high ISO. That's not your sensor, baby. That's not your camera. Well, it's, it's in your camera. It's a chipset. It's a spatial temporal firmware compressional algorithm that transforms this into this. And it's firmware. It's a set of algorithms that goes, hey, you know, we can fill in this crap because we know what the adjacent side is. We'll actually apply temporal compression and we'll apply spatial elimination so we're able to turn this into this. Oh my god, that's amazing. Here's another example. This is an example of it off. You see all that noise? This is a really dark uh, parking garage. This is being applied to a video surveillance. So, you know, you, you don't have to increase the size of the lens. It's like, well, we can stick a big-ass lens on there and gather more light. But you know what we can do? Instead of doing that, which is really expensive, because optics are expensive, firmware isn't expensive! Firmware isn't expensive! Optics are very expensive. Understand that point? Get it? Get it? Get it? Okay. By applying firmware, we're able to turn that into this. Exact same image with the firmware applied. Oh my god, night and day. Look at that. There is what the sensor has captured. You're thinking, well, in your images on your D750, Canon, Nikon, Sony, they're all using this, okay? You're like, oh my god, this camera's so awesome. I'm shooting in a dark parking garage and there's just some overhead lights and look how awesome it can. No, your sensor isn't getting that, baby. Your sensor is getting this. This is still what your sensor sees. This is what happens after the analog digital converters and the spatial temporal compressional algorithms are applied. Uh, you know what that means? That means all this noise here, which is not captured, is filled in. So that means part of your picture is generated by your camera. That means it's actually filling in information that actually wasn't there. You'd be like, oh no, that's not true. Yes, it is true. Um, that, that's Canon and Nikon ain't going to tell you about that, baby. But that is in every digital camera. It's gotten a lot better. Um, they're able to improve the temporal algorithms. They're able to improve the spatial algorithms. Able to eliminate out the noise. Okay, I mean, if you thought that some sort of super massive revolution in sensor technology has occurred between now and like five years ago. Well, uh, they've gotten better, but they haven't got that much better. Um, what has happened is there has been an enormous increase in processing. This is about processing! And also AD conversion and improvements in the spatial temporal compressional algorithms which improve the signal, eliminate out the noise. Like I said, this came from radio astronomy. But also it was adapted to earlier videography. Um, so I've got a bunch of articles below for you to read about this. Uh, what it is, why it is, how it is, get into the technical stuff. You may or may not be interested, but it's like adaptive temporal noise reduction algorithms and uh, temporal noise reduction. There are SNR, spatial temporal compressional algorithms, which know what to look for. They know the earmark of noise and they eliminate it both spatially and temporally. Okay? I bet you don't find another video like this on YouTube. Now you're a lot smarter than other digital shooters. You know stuff and you can impress and go, Wow, man, that's cool, dude. Okay. <laughs> Catch you later, bye.